Hi again, Adrian Cosman Jones here from Onsite Helper. And in this video, I'll be taking you through uh, Google Shared Drives. So we'll start off with an overview of Shared Drives and how it works. And we'll look at the differences between uh, Shared Drives and My Drive. How to manage uh, secure access to your Shared Drives. Then we'll follow by how to move your data into Shared Drives. And then what happens when files are deleted. And finally, accessing your files using Drive File Stream. All right, to get started, open up a new tab and you can open up Google Drive. Um, once that's opened, you'll be able to see on the left, you've got your My Drive and also Shared Drives. So we've got the two places you can save your files. Uh, with My Drive, um, you know, obviously the files that you save in there, you're the owner. Um, and you can share them individually uh, with others, uh, or you can do uh, link sharing as well. Um, but if you want to collaborate uh, with others more regularly, uh, let's say within a team, then you want to save the files in Shared Drive. Um, with Shared Drive, the, the shared site or the, that folder becomes the owner of those files. And any members uh, which are, that are part of that uh, shared drive automatically get access to all the files within there. So I'm going to go into a bit more detail of the differences between my drive and share drive. We'll have a look at this table here. So here we can see um, with my drive, you know, who can add files. Um, the person who owns my drive can add them as opposed to with share drive, any member that has contributor uh, access or higher, they can also add files. Um, who owns the files and folders? Uh, the with my drive, the individual who created that file or folder, they're the owner. Uh, whereas, as I mentioned before, with sh shared drives, the uh, the team will be the owner, not, not the creator of the file. You can see who can move files and folders. With my drive, um, you can move them if you're the owner. Um, however, with shared drive, again, you need either the contributor content manager or manager permission uh, to move files either from my drive uh, or, or within shared drive. So if you pause this video, you can look in the detail with those three permissions. And finally, uh, can you sync files to the computer? Yep, you can with uh, drive file stream using shared drives, not with uh, backup and sync. Um, and finally, yep, also how long do files stay in trash? Uh, they basically stay in, in the rubbish bin for 30 days. Um, and then you need to be the with shared drives, you need to be manager permission to, to permanently delete it if you want it out of there before that 30 days. Um, same with restoring files, you need to have contributor access. Uh, so we actually do recommend third party backups um, to back up your shared drive and my drive for, for these particular reasons that, you know, data can maybe stay in there for a maximum 30 days and uh, things can be accidentally deleted if users have the wrong permissions. So we'll just have a quick look at some examples when you might want to use shared drive and they've got a, a couple of good examples here. So obviously if you're working on a project um, or even company-wide information. These are all perfect scenarios when, when, when you want to put the data into shared drive as opposed to my drive. Because when the data is sort of in your my drive, um, sharing it amongst the team is a lot more difficult um, and often um, people will miss out and people can't find things. Whereas shared drive is a lot simpler and easy to manage, which I'll show you now. So the first thing you want to do is be able to create a new shared drive. So to do that, jump into Shared Drives and you can either right click in the blank space in New Drive or just click New up here. And because we're in the Shared Drives folder, it will create a new Shared Drive. So we'll just call this Project A. Um, so that's pretty much it. As you can see, it's created a new um, Shared Drive called Project A. Uh, just shows one person has it. And now you can basically drop files in here. Um, or create a new file within here. So now we want to manage who has access to this particular uh, shared drive. To do that, you click on the little down arrow there and just go to manage members. Obviously, because I've just created it, I'm the only member. But what we can then do is just basically start typing in some names. So anyone that you have on your contact list, um, they'll appear. So if I just start 
probably one of my employees, Boston, um, that would grant him access. So you can make him the content manager, um, manager contributor, as you can see the permissions here, whether you want them to be able to add, edit files, delete files, or even manage people within the shared drive, then obviously give him the manager. Uh, you probably want to give them a, a little message as well, just to let them know that they now have access to this. So you'd say, you know, welcome to the project's share drive. Um, and finally, rather than uh, adding people individually, it's actually better to, well, if you've got quite a few people in your team, it's better to create a group. Um, so let's say, because uh, Boston is part of the help desk, um, I'd be adding in... Um, on-site help, uh, help desk. So this is basically uh, a group. Um, and within this group, um, there's you know, seven or eight engineers, um, which automatically have access. And the benefit of the group is, you don't have to keep adding people uh, in and out of all these different um, shared drives. If someone comes or goes, you just add them to that group and then they'll be automatically added to all the relevant um, shared drives with the correct permission. So it's much easier to manage that. So in a later video, I'll actually show you how to create um, these groups in the admin console and manage the users within them. Uh, but for now, obviously you can just add in individuals like so. Uh, and then, then you just click send and then that would give them the access. You also wanna set the permissions for the uh, shared drive. Um, so this is more company-wide permission. So you want to say, you know, is this a, is this particular shared drive always going to be an internal um, shared drive where you don't want any of the files to ever be shared externally? That's where you set this setting here. Um, so people outside your organization um, can access files, or maybe you might say that this will always be internal and no one can share externally. Um, Again, sharing with uh, non-members, you know, can this be enabled or not? Um, and finally, can people download and print? Um, just one other thing with uh, sharing externally. Um, so you can add individuals, uh, individual email addresses uh, for external sharing, but you can't just allow um, a particular shared drive um, for external access for anyone. Um, if you need that type of sharing permission, then you can do that still through my drive by creating a shared folder and then choosing the option, anyone with the link can access this, which just means they don't have to have a G Suite or Google account to, to access that, that, that data. Whereas in shared drive, um, you can still do that type of thing, but you have to do that on the, on the file level. You can't do that on the folder level. So if you had individual files within there that you want to enable anyone access, you know, whether they've got a G Suite or Gmail account or not, that's when you'd set that permission on that file level as you normally would. So now I'll cover moving your data from my drive into your shared drive. So a couple of things to be aware of. You can move multiple files at once by selecting many and dragging from my drive into a shared drive folder. However, you can't drag um, whole folders from my drive to shared drive unless you're administrator. But what you could do is create um, individual folders within the shared drive uh, with the same name and then drag the comment contents of the my drive um, data into your shared drive. So just lastly, a um, couple of things to be aware of. When you do drag a file from my drive or a folder uh, across to shared drives, whoever had access to that file in the sharing permissions, all that will come across. Uh, as long as within that shared drive that the option is allowed to um, have non-members um, access that file. Um, so th those permissions will come across when you drag that. You don't have to re-add um, those people in unless that option is disabled. Uh, the, the last thing is the, the ownership of that file will now become the team drive. So the previous owner will lose that ownership and that um, shared drive will now become the owner uh, of, that, of those files and folders. So now I'll give you a bit of a demo of moving those files across. So let's say we'll jump into my drive, grab a particular file out of blogs. Um, 
So you can do it, let's say this particular file here, you can either right click, choose uh, to move it. Just go click on the back arrow, back again out of my drive, choose share drive. Uh, might put it in the company share folder, uh, internal systems. Then you just basically move it. So obviously you could have uh, also select, it's gone now, but you could have held down shift, grabbed a whole heap, or, or you could um, do the whole folder. Right click, move. The other way to do it is just to simply drag and drop. Um, don't like the drag and drop because sometimes you might accidentally drop it under the wrong folder. That's why I prefer, as you can see, it's easy to just put it in the wrong spot. Um, that's why I prefer to right click and move because you specifically select it um, and you know it's going in the right spot. And you can also move files uh, within shared drive. So as long as you've got the right permission, um, so you can basically just grab any particular file Right click this, move to, and just select a different shared drive folder as well. Exact same way. Or you can again drag and drop it um, into you know a different particular folder if you if you want to do that as well. With deleting files, um, I'll show you how that works. So let's say if I go back to I'll just grab that file which we moved before from my drive. So let's say if someone was to delete this particular uh, file, um, it went missing and you, you didn't know what happened. So just click delete for everyone. So you can see you get a warning for that 30 days. Uh, so yeah, something got deleted and you weren't sure what. Uh, what you'd need to do is basically go into the particular share where you think it was deleted from. Click the drop down here for the permissions of that shared drive and just go to view bin and here you can see in the bin we've got this particular file you can right click and just choose restore or delete forever um, but yeah as you can see the message down the bottom um, if nothing's get if nothing's done uh, within 30 days then this file will be deleted forever uh, in this case we want to restore it uh, so yeah, it's definitely good to have a third party backup service in place in case, you know, I mean, who checks these things every 30 days or less than that really. Um, so if you want recommendations on that, speak to us if you don't already have it in place. Um, yeah, we set up third party backups to protect the data for businesses as well. And finally, accessing your files locally on the computer without going via the browser, you want to install Google Drive file stream. Uh, now, rather than showing you how to do that, I've actually covered that in another video. So have a look at the, the Google Drive uh, video that covers how to install it and it also shows how to access um, all files in my drive as well as um, shared drives locally on your computer and not via the browser, which is ideal if you're using um, you know, applications on your computer, let's say CAD or Microsoft Office, those types of things, rather than having to download the files and upload them each time. You can just have these files synced to your computer via Windows Explorer or Mac um, Finder as well. Um, so that pretty much wraps up this video. I uh, hope you've gotten some value out of shared drives and you start using this more often. Um, yeah, it's a really good system to use to keep all your files very secure within your organization. Thanks for your time.